Hello lads and ladies and welcome back for another video on the channel today. It is Saturday the 30th of December and Fleetwood have parted company with its manager Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson was appointed manager just a week after the window closed and he sacked two days before the window opens. Again, Fleetwood have played 23 games, 17 of which Lee Johnson has been manager. Managed to get four wins, five draws, and the rest ending in defeat. Eight defeats in total. Nine without a win in all competitions. Just scoring just the two goals. An absolute disaster of a season for Fleetwood. Disastrous period under Lee Johnson. But today we're going to give my thoughts, my feelings of everything going on at Fleetwood Town, everything revolving Lee Johnson being sacked, and everything that the club needs to do if it's going to retain its position in League One. But not just that, to, again, this club needs sorting out from top to bottom. So Fleetwood have been struggling for a little while, and I have done a video on this, so go and check that out of my thoughts on, you know, different reasons why Fleetwood are in this position from, you know, the Andy Pilly situation to different people at the football club to, you know, players, staff, um, you know, even, you know, the little things about not getting over the line, you know, different signings and, you know, letting players go, you know, focusing too much on the academy. It's, it's a range of different things that I touch into. But Lee Johnson, for me, I wasn't happy with the appointment at first. It grew on me. He spoke well. Everything that he said in his post-match interviews, I 90% of the time agree with. And that's for the first time. I thought for the first time we've appointed a, a manager here for the first time since Rosler. Sheridan did well. Kept Fleetwood up. When we needed him, and we need a Sheridan type. Now we need a miracle. And, uh, you know, I know Jesus rose again at Easter. Well, it's Christmas where he was born. We, we need something and it is absolutely, you know, ridiculous that we find ourselves with a third manager after 23 league games. And I famously said on, you know, that League One podcast, if you have three managers in the season, then you're relegated automatically for me and you're done. And for me, Fleetwood are going that way. Um, Rosser was a super manager for this football club. Barton did okay with the best ever budget Fleetwood ever had um, and did what? Was expected, in my opinion, with the budget we had. We had the fifth best budget. We finished sixth on points per game. Um, you can't take that away from him. Um, and then, obviously, Brown. We've had um, you know, Simon Grayson. And then Johnson kind of felt, right, OK. We knew he you know, wasn't liked at Burnham. Wasn't really liked at Sunderland. Won a trophy at Sunderland. Was a streaky manager. 40% win record. Came in, did okay, you know, won a couple of games. We went six on beat and played well at Barnsley away, played well against Blackpool at home, still conceding a lot of goals, beat Kidderminster in the cup, and then bang, back down to reality. And, you know, the games that we were losing, we were conceding soft goals. And the issue that I think that he's found is Scott Brown got sacked in September after the defeat away at Charlton, six games in. I thought Scott Brown wasn't the right man to lead Fleetwood forward, but I still think that was maybe two or three games a little bit too hesitant, maybe a bit too early uh, when you look back at it. Do I think we'd be in a worse position if we kept Scott Brown? I don't. We might have not scored as many. I don't think we'd have con con conceded as many, but I kind of don't think we're in a better position for sacking Scott Brown. And um, The issue is, I think there's so many players at that football club that are Scott Brown's men, and there's no, no reason to suggest why they wouldn't be. Josh Feller was his first kind of second signing. It was his captain, first big signing on a three-year deal. Sean Rooney was his first signing. He's a Celtic fan, looks up to Brown. You know, he's brought other players in during his tenure as well. Adam Montgomery is a Celtic boy. Scott Robertson, who has now left the football club, you know, was a Celtic boy and looked up, signed because of Scott Brown. Wouldn't have signed for, for Lee Johnson, wouldn't have signed for anyone, you know, other than Scott Brown at Fleetwood Town Football Club. You know, and, you know, Jay Lynch you know, was made number one. Um, you know, we didn't get given the number, but got offered it, you know, and was in the team every week from, from kind of his tenure. And then, yeah, players that didn't quite like Brown, the, the younger players that didn't get the opportunities. Um, I don't think Marriott was uh, too fond of him. He wanted to leave the football club. You know, you're looking at, you know, Key and A's who didn't really get opportunities as well. And then kind of what happened was when Scott Brown got sacked, you had a mix. And the issue that Fleetwood had, the most influential players in the dressing rooms are the experienced ones. Josh Feller is captain, you know, and, you know, a big player in League One, a good player when, when he's on it as well, to be fair to him. Sean Rooney was 
good last season going forward at times defensively worried me. Big play in the dressing room because he's vocal, he's, you know, he's experienced. Players look up to players like that. You know, Jay Lynch, experienced player as well, you know. And these are, are the, the players that I kind of think that wasn't fan of Lee Johnson and didn't want Scott Brown to be sacked. And when you've got young players like Kian Hayes, Melissa Samoa, um, you know, your Callum Dolans, you know, your Bagley's coming back into the fold now. You've got Connor Teal, Harrison Holgate, good players as well. You've kind of got a mix where the younger players don't know where to look. Do they trust the manager? Do they trust the experienced players? And it's kind of a bit like a rut. Um, and it kind of feels a little bit all over the place on the pitch with that as well. And the players don't know where, they, you know, where they're coming or going. Lee Johnson said a lot of the time during his tenure about players, you know, we want January. And as a player, I wouldn't want to be in the mix of that. If I was playing for a manager and he kept going, well, we need January, I need new players, I'd be questioning, am I good enough? Does my manager like me? And then all of a sudden, then you listen to the experienced players going, no, he's, he's not this, he's, he's this, he's that. You don't want to play for him. And then, I, you know, you don't know if that's happening. You, you, you have an, you know, a, a view from the outside, you think that's going to be happening. But it's like, you know, these younger players are thinking, well, if I'm not wanted... Do I give my all? And I'm not saying they're not giving their all, but you know, all of a sudden confidence drops and you're not quite the, the same player as you once was or, or you can be. And, you know, as a manager, when you're sitting down with these players, like Lee Johnson said and saying, you know, you might be moving on or I want this player to come in. We need seven or eight players to come in. We need pace. We have this. We don't have this. We have too many young players. We have 15 players unavailable. It is damaging to hear. But... To be sacked two days before this January big clear out, it speaks volumes because if you'd have got any further than we signed players that he's looked at, all of a sudden the manager comes in and then it really is. It's like, you know, you're mixing spaghetti bolognese with a curry, you know, together, very nice. But as together, it's it's not great. Let's be honest, it's, it's an absolute mess. But I'm very surprised that we've made it now. I can kind of see the reasons why now, because somebody else is going to come in. The only one thing I don't get, it's not like, oh, January is two days away. You know, we're going to bring in different players for a different manager. Well, they would have surely had recruitment meetings about who they want to recruit, who they want to get, what type of player, what type of formation he wants to play, what type of plays. He probably had calls, probably arranged deals, to be fair. And all of a sudden now that's out the window two days before. So I'm a little bit frustrated that this has happened. You know, it's four wins in 17 games isn't brilliant. No wins in nine. We don't look like scoring. We don't straighten boxes enough. But it just seems very bad there. And the players don't seem to look up to Lee Johnson. Don't seem to be fighting for Lee Johnson. And as much as I've liked... Lee Johnson for how he speaks, he is not the big problem here at this football club. The problem is Andy Pilly, what he's done for Fleetwood, our football club, my football club, you know, it's a community football club, I can be so thankful for. But losing him is the biggest issue that could have happened to this football club because we've lost that security guard, we've lost that bit of security. He ran everything at the football club and he had people, good people at the football club who helped him running for him as well. And when he goes, all of a sudden people have to step up a mark and they're not quite as experienced as Andy Pilly. Andy Pilly had been running Fleetwood Town Football Club for over 20 years. You know, he's won promotions, he's had highs, he's had lows, he's had he knows when to sack a manager. And to be fair, when Andy Pilly is normally sacked a manager, Fleetwood have normally done better for it. We needed to you know Rosler was the one that I was disappointed about, but Sheridan came in and kept us up. Then Barton got sacked at a right time, Grayson kept us kind of secure in the league. Grayson got sacked at the right time, Craney came in, kept us up, Brown came in, Brown, that was it, no pilly then. All of a sudden then I was a little bit a little bit worried. And it kind of feels at times where, you know, there are good football people at the football club, but it kind of feels like, well, it's a bit disorganised and it's a little bit like Job for the boys at times, and it's not good, and it's not a way to run a football club, and it is a shame, it really is a shame that, you know, this is happening to our football club, because, you know, Andy will be in, you know, you know, he, you know, he is inside at the moment, he'll be inside absolutely devastated that this is happening, and it just feels like all the hard work over the last 20 years is slowly being ruined. And you cannot get through three managers in, in after 23 games. You know, it's Watford-esque. Wigan did it last season. You know, Liam Richardson, Colo Torrey, Sean Maloney. You know, and 
And I know Danny Cowley got sacked on the 2nd of January last year and it was the best thing that's happened to them in recent years. But I can't see it this at this football club. And things needed to change. I didn't think the manager, I didn't think Lee Johnson would go anywhere. We're now paying off three managers. You know, we're paying off Scott Brown, paying off Lee Johnson. Well, who are we going to go for next? We've got to go experience. I don't think we can hire from within. We've got to go somebody that can keep Fleetwood up. You know, all of a sudden then, Sean Rooney's back in the fold. He didn't get on. Is he going to stay at the football club? Is he going to go? Is some players also going to start fighting again? You know, and we need that at Fleetwood. We're budget. We're proud. I said that in my video yesterday. We need a little bit of spirit, a bit of firepower. We need a bit of a will to win. And, you know, Johnson, for me, was the right man for this football club. But unfortunately, the players that we had at times, I don't think took his messages on board. Look, sometimes he shouldn't have said the things he said about January, what are new players. And, you know, Hibernian fans, Sunderland fans, you know, they said that he, he was like that. And football fans aren't stupid. I don't think we should have sacked him. I don't think this is the right decision. And it's, you know, only time will tell. I think if Lee Johnson would have got January, I think we would have been in a better position. But you can't keep saying that. He's had, what, 14 weeks in the in the post? You know, that's, you know, it's not a long time. It's about 100 days as charged as a, as a manager. And it's like, you, can, you can't you can literally turn water into wine overnight. And, you know, and, you know, he said one spring doesn't make a summer. And, you know, and he hasn't. We've had moments this season. And the next game, we're back down to, you know, reality. When you're conceding the goals that we are, it's soft. And the club just need to have a look at itself. We need to be harder to play against. We need to be harder to beat. We need a security in progress. We need to go back to the football club we were about seven or eight years ago when we first got into League One. Hard to play against. Open stadium. Our house. Our rules. Welcome to Highbury. You're getting out when you come here. You're going to have to come to fight. Because seven or eight years ago, you know, no one wanted to come to fight. It was just an open stadium and everyone saw it as a tricky tie because it's Fleetwood they're always up for it they always play better they're, they're a small team but fight for each other and we haven't really had any fights since you know we had a bit under Brown to be fair but under Bart and we had that little bit of you know a lot of the time they're fighting each other and fighting other players but um, less about the Bart and the better um, you got to take some humour out of the situation but we had a bit of fight in the team and at the moment it feels like we're like a little cat at the moment. You roll us over, tickle our belly, and we'll, we'll just sit there all day and let, let you tickle our underbelly and you can score a goal. That's not good enough. And with Satley Johnson, what, basically 100 days into his post, the wrong decision with January coming up as well. An experienced manager will be able to attract players, in my opinion. But it feels like player power has won on this one. It really does. And the players didn't really seem to buy into what Lee Johnson wanted to do. Um for reasons I can understand some of them what, what they think but some of it for me managers always need the power um, and I am disappointed that this has happened we're now searching for another manager if you're a decent manager who are you, who you going to go for who are you going to go for you know who would want to come to Fleetwood Let's be honest, you know, we are a small club, we pay well, you know, we've always been, you know, punching above our weight, we should not be in League One, who would want to come to Fleetwood and that is, you know, the, the bad situation, but again, Lee Johnson's gone, I don't think it's the right decision, I'll be honest with you, I think there's, you know, it's not, his fault, of course, players need to take the blame, manager needs to take a little bit of the blame, Scott Brown will take a little bit of the blame, you know, for his first six games, ownership will take a bit of the blame, you know, players, you know, have to look at themselves and be better, I, I, I'm in shock, to be honest with you, I really am, and, and it's the last thing I expected to, to be speaking about on a Saturday afternoon, a week ago, we went to the league leaders, played really well, could have won the game, could have lost it, got a great point against Portsmouth, less than a week later, we're sat with no manager, we're 23rd in the tail and we're five points adrift. A week's a long time in football and we've, we've just seen it. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Um, again, go and watch what's, what's going on at Fleetwood Town video as well. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you make sense of that. Let me know your thoughts. Who should Fleetwood go for next? Too early to look at that in my eyes. You know, he's been gone half an hour and it's like, well, you don't get divorced and you're looking for a, you know, you're going on Tinder, you know, half an hour later. It, it, it's not right at the moment, but you know, there's a long way to go and an appointment needs to be made soon. I'll tell you that now. And a big month for this football club, the biggest month in our club's history. And um, it's do or die. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. We're on the road to 13,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. Where do we go from here?
of the cards. Long live League One.